Good afternoon and happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Welcome to my broadcast. Today's episode number is 988. That's 12 more days to the big 1000. Um, and today's is Valentine's Day, so happy Valentine's Day. Um, what I did the title was basically throw a quandary at you, actually, a contradictory quandary at you. Yes, contradictory quandary. That's a big phrase right there. How many syllables there? Basically, the idea about letting yourself kick the table. Um, let yourself be surprised, but also be prepared. And that's kind of what I'll speak to today, because if you're single, being um, being surprised by love, I actually posted a meme on Facebook today, which is a picture of like the a Cupid statue behind a wall, like hiding behind a wall from the people walking by. The idea being is that, you know, Cupid could surprise you from out of nowhere. It's a very romantic gesture, but it doesn't have much bearing in reality, just to be clear. So Valentine's Day, as I've talked about this whole week, um, I've talked about it as being Singles Awareness Day, Singles Appreciation Day, Singles Celebration Day, because many people are single over Valentine's Day and it can be a challenge. So since I'm going to continue the theme of speaking to singles, because if you're in a relationship, you've got a whole other thing on your list today. I don't. I, I feel for you. Um, Valentine's Day can be a real pressure in relationships. So when you're single, it's freedom. That's why I call it Singles Freedom Day. So, speaking about today, thank you, Sue. Happy Valentine's Day to you, too. What we'll speak about today is the idea about being prepared and being surprised in the idea of meeting somebody falling in love. Because there's a, there's a notion, a romantic notion floating around the universe, around people, that love comes out of left field. And you'll be surprised by what happens. And you'll be um, tickled by somebody you meet, so to speak. I know enough about relationships <laughs> and the pain people go through, the challenge people go through, that sometimes those surprise relationships can end up being much more pain than pleasure. And that's one of the challenges of relationship if you go in blind. So when you talk about being surprised by love, it's great to be surprised by love when you've done some preparation work, which I'll speak about in a moment. And then the idea about being prepared is not to make, let me say it this way, being prepared for love does not mean that you don't allow surprise. In fact, being prepared makes the surprises much more fun because when you're prepared for what you really want and you know what you're looking for, like I'm teaching that now, then that surprise will be within the parameters of what you're interested in. So a surprise because you don't expect it necessarily, but it is grateful because it aligns to what your values are. And that's what I'm speaking about here. Because a lot of times people are surprised by love, by some stranger showing up in their lives that may not be necessarily as positive as you expected. I've heard plenty of stories and I know plenty of relationships that have been, let me say this nicely, massively dysfunctional because they weren't prepared. You may have experienced your own relationship past in your own history where the relationship you had was wonderful at the beginning and then sucked towards the end. I know I've had a few of those and I think I'm not alone. So that experience we have oftentimes is from a relationship we didn't expect to happen. In fact, I look back at some of my relationships, even some of the great ones. None of them were like predicted, planned and strategized. They came out of left field. It was a pleasant surprise. Somebody I liked and we met. And to be honest, none of them were through the dating apps. Yeah, that's an interesting conversation as well, which I've done another time. Not today. But it's been a place where we recognize the fact that love comes from interesting ways. But the thing I became clear about is that when we let love in without any filters, any boundaries, any preparation, we may not get what we want because love itself, although it's pure, sometimes is carried through the, the um, vehicle with somebody who's not. And I'm using that term loosely, what I mean by purity. So let me say it another way. How shall I say it? <laughs> There's no scripts. So I'm like, okay, how do I say this? You may discover in relationships that you've been in the past that you met somebody who came across with the right intentions, the right presentation, the right appearance, but once you got into that relationship, it started going downhill or going to a place that wasn't healthy for you. That is a, that happens to a lot of people, and it's a very common experience, unfortunately. And I think the one caveat that I'm speaking to here is about when you really know what you're looking for, and I speak about this in, I have, a, I have an, online, an online course to attract the man you want for this design for women, of course. Well, not of course, because it could be for a gay men too, but it's designed for women. The functionality of that is to help you create a vision and intention and a, a field of vibration, um, that's what we use, a field of clarity, so we say, of what you want to create in a relationship. 
Because the thing about relationship is, it's not something you're an innocent, you can be an innocent bystander of, although you may have done that in the past. A relationship is an intentional creation. And ideally, both partners, before they even meet, are already doing that. Here's the thing. When you have a clarity and a vision about what you want to create, when you know what sort of relationship you want to have, and you're very clear in the vision, the intention, the expression of that relationship, you start to create a um, sensitivity, so to speak. Meaning that what you'll notice is when you meet somebody who fits that energy, you'll be, oh, this is cool. But when you meet somebody who may be interested in you who doesn't fit that energy, you go, no, I know better. But the thing is, most people don't have that, that, that sensitivity. They're basically looking for love, forlornly, hoping, wishing, praying for love. For many women, it's a damsel in distress program they've been carrying for a long time, even though they may be putting on a brave face. I know because many of my clients have been through this. But what's happening is they're being so um, unconditional in their choosing that they're not getting what they really want. They're getting what might satisfy them to a degree by being loving, but all the baggage that goes with it isn't healthy. And yes, if you want to speak spiritually and get into the whole framing of relationships, you know, being unconditional is a good thing, but it, there's, it's almost like, as one of my understandings was from a long time ago, is you can love everybody, but only like a few. It's having that, that differentiation and that delineation to understand that what you want to have in a relationship isn't everybody, or isn't, some, isn't, doesn't, isn't um, invitation to anybody, it's an invitation to somebody specific. So being prepared in the title is talking about really having clarity about what you really want in a relationship. In fact, I would recommend you do that for everything in your life. It's create a vision and intention of clarity about what you want to have in your life. Relationships, jobs, living accommodations, houses, cars, travel, vacation, all those things. That's why at the beginning of the year I talked about, um, I didn't know I was going to go here, but at the beginning of the year I talked about the, remove, the replacement of resolutions, which I think suck because they're ego-driven, pushing to get things done. Replace them with a vision and an intention that will allow you to create a vision that's bigger than what you want. Excuse me, bigger than what you expect. And by understanding that's the way you create your life, then being prepared, as I said in the title, to actually have that clarity of intention. I mean, I talk about this a lot because it's a powerful, um, I want to say technology, but it's a powerful way of creating what you want. So in a relationship, absolutely, you want to be prepared to know what you want, to attract what you want, and create a vision that is magnetic. Because, especially if you're a woman, you have a gift of magnetism. You may not realize it that way, but it's a gift that you have that lets you attract in what you really want. And when you do that, you have this understanding that your power, your um, authority, rides on top of that. So if you don't have clarity in what you really want, your magnet magnetism, your attraction, is, is um, well, I can say it in a nice way. I was going to say it's going to be unconditional that's not the way I want to use it it frankly is a way of being magnetic to everything you notice like for example how um, let's see, I'm trying to think about analogies I'm, I'm thinking of the, the idea that in, in the wrecking yards we have the big magnet comes over a car it picks up everything metal not just the car well it's a crude analogy but the idea being is if you're looking for love and relationship if you don't have clarity in what that is and focus and, and delineation what it is then anybody could show up attracted to you which is not what you really want, unless you're that desperate, which you're not, I trust. So my invitation to you is to look at what you really want to have in your relationship. Get clear, a vision, intention, vision boards, living intentions, stuff I work with in my work, I can tell you what those are if you want to find out more. There's different ways of creating a framing and understanding what you want to have in a relationship, especially if you spent Valentine's Day alone. Because maybe after Valentine's Day, you're saying, you know what, I really want to have a relationship. Maybe you and I don't say you should be driven by this, but maybe you felt a little bit envious of the people who are in a relationship on Valentine's Day, although frankly I wouldn't be. The pressure of Valentine's Day, it is not done well, it's not fun to be part of, so it's good in fact to be single. As I said at the beginning, being, being free on Valentine's Day is a good thing for a single person. So there's that. Um, but let me get back to the topic. So there is, there is a clarity of understanding that you have preparation of knowing what you want to have, and then be available to be surprised by the person who actually fits what you want. I mean, that's the thing. If you create a vision of what you really want, you might be thinking, oh, it's never going to show up. So when they do show up, you will be surprised. <laughs> so understand that surprise goes hand in hand with preparation. That's really the pivot point, is you understand that you can be prepared. It doesn't, it doesn't remove the ability to be surprised. In fact, what it does, it focuses the ability to be surprised to line up with what you really want to create. And if you get clear about what you want and you have the right energy behind it, it is almost a done deal. 
and you still might be surprised. I'm just seeing if anyone's on a safe. This is good. This is kind of the, the nugget I want to give you today. Um, let's see what else is there? Is there anything else? Anything else? In the title, I did say. Um, let me just check something here. No, it doesn't want to show me. Okay, then it's going to be the way it is. The recognition. I'm trying to see what's going on here. Okay, sorry. I'm I'm just trying to look for a certain button. I can't find it. It's the title of what I said. It doesn't matter. So here's my 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 um, recommendation. Now, just to get, just recap what I said this past week, so you got this to play with today as well. If you're looking to go out tonight on Valentine's Day, you're in a couple. I wish you luck. I wish you much um, grace and ease, because it's not always an easy night to go out on Valentine's Day. There's a lot of prefixed menus out there and stuff like that that make it harder to go out today than any other night. Um, frankly, I said that most lot, if you're smart on Valentine's Day, you actually go out the day before or the day after when prices are reasonable. That's another topic. That was earlier this week, by the way. I also said if you're single, this is a good day to go out somewhere where it's more social, less romantic, more social, and enjoy yourself with your own company. Go to the movies, go have a dinner somewhere, or go to a bar where it's more sociable, a nice bar, not a, you know, unless you like dive bars. But do things that are more sociably appreciative to you so you can enjoy being single, or stay at home. There's a lot that Valentine's Day can stir up for people, and this topic hopefully will give you some insights, some direction, some clarity, and maybe even some hope about what you can really have in a relationship. If you haven't seen the broadcast before, this is my mission, this is my daily commitment to serve, at least for another couple of, days, couple of weeks. I'm planning on changing after a thousand Facebook Live. We'll see what happens. Um, just so you know, I've done this broadcast now for three years, and I hit my thousandth broadcast in 12 days. So do something two weeks, and I'm looking to decide if I want to keep going daily after that or do something different. So savor them while you can. <laughs> things might change in a couple of weeks. So speaking of which, so a couple of things I want to do. I'm going to put it in the comments because if you're single, especially if you're single, um, the reminder to love yourself first is something I keep talking about every single day because if you don't do that, it makes your relationship harder too. So adding to your list of what you want to create in a relationship is to fill up your own battery first. Loving yourself first makes you much more able to attract what you want. It makes you more attractive to what you want. And it makes you more discerning about who you want to be around. That's a triple win, by the way. So I'll put a link in the comments for my self-love guided meditation because frankly, it works. It's a rock star product. Yeah, I know I'm biased. But if you practice it, it's got two, an AM and a PM guided meditation plus a guidebook that shows you a couple of levels to go deeper on it. It will transform your experience with yourself, which makes you more available to love on a healthy level with everybody around you. I recommend it. Um, if you want to reach out to me on social media because you have questions or you want to find how to work with me, then I'll leave, you just go, you send me a message over social media. That's fine. Uh, I'm not going to put links in the comments about that. Just the one link for my guided meditation because it's easier that way. Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this every day, at least from least, at least up until now. Um, seven days a week, right here on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. Um, you usually go live at 5 p.m. Pacific time every single day. You can check me out and get some information, insights, and everything else. I can tell you where to find the replays as well, um, which is, which is, which is. So this is my daily Facebook Live on personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. The replays go to my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby to author. Please like my page. Although Facebook is only showing two or three um, hundred broadcasts there. Thank you. I appreciate it, Sue. I much appreciate it. I'm glad you like them and I'm glad you're getting value from them. So thanks for the comments. Um, and this is a Facebook Live in case you're watching on YouTube, wondering who I'm talking to. <laughs> so. Um, replays on my business page on Facebook there's only two or three hundred visible because that's the way Facebook shows them so you can watch them on there if you want to go to my YouTube channel which I'm a big fan of because I actually put everything up there my YouTube channel is youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Barry Selby please subscribe to my channel on there is a playlist called messages for the masculine where every single one of my broadcasts does show up you can through the titles find keywords that speak to you including this one in a few minutes and get the help you need again link in the comments my self-love meditation Oh, one, one quick PS. Just got confirmed today. Next Tuesday, so four days from now. Five days? Four days. Uh, from now, um, at 5.30 p.m. Pacific time, 6.30 p.m. Mountain Standard time, and 8.30 p.m. East Coast time, uh, join me and my pal and my buddy, Katie. We're doing a live broadcast to let you know about our upcoming Inspired Heart Mastery um, course that's coming up at the end of the month, actually beginning of March. So that's next Tuesday. I'll be talking about it more on the weekend. Um, there's a link on my wall if you want to check it out. You can sign up for it there. Um, that's something special that's being developed. That's also something about why I'm looking, what I'm doing after my thousandth broadcast because I'm going to be busy with a mastermind. I might shift things around. 
So that's going to be a recommendation. Check that out. Um, replays, broadcast again, self-love meditations in the comments. And I think that's about it. Whatever you're doing today and what you've done today and what you're doing tonight, please take care of yourself and enjoy your, your Valentine's Day. Because as I said in every top broadcast, please take care of yourself. I mean it. With that, I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. And again, take care. I'll see you soon.